Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal and welcome to Munich. Just looking out my hotel window here, looking over the skyline of the city. It is grey, it is wet, it is really, really miserable. I can barely see, I don't know, the other side of the city. It's such a low, cloudy, misty rain out here. Not a nice day at all. Unfortunately, for the Arsenal fans who are here, but I'm sure they're still going to make the best of it no matter what. I'll be heading into the city in a little bit, and I'm sure I'm going to find them in very, very good voice and enjoying the city despite the weather. But yeah, miserable day, but hopefully a little bit later on tonight, it is not going to be a miserable evening for Arsenal. They have a huge opportunity ahead of them tonight with a chance of a semi-final in the Champions League, tantalisingly close for Mikel Arteta's side. It's going to be difficult. They're going to need one of the club's best away performances in European competition to do it but it is entirely possible. So we're going to talk about that in today's show. We'll look at what Mikel Arteta said. I was at the press conference last night at the Allianz Arena, speaking to Mikel Arteta and Leandro Trossard ahead of the game. We'll go over some of the comments from Mikel. We'll look at possible starting 11s tonight, some of the big decisions facing Mikel. We'll talk about what Bayern Munich might well do with some injuries and suspensions affecting them as well. Got some comments from you guys as well in terms of what you want to see. So plenty to discuss as we build up to a monumental night in Munich for Arsenal. What an unbelievable night it was in the Champions League last night. Uh, I went out, a few of us journalists went out after the get, after the press conference last night and we were at a pub, unfortunately, that did not have screens. And so we we're all following what was going on in the PSG and the Dortmund games uh, on our phones and just a remarkable night. I came home, watched all the highlights in my hotel room. Um, and yeah, crazy night at Champions League football, thrilling. What have we got in store a little bit later on today? Hopefully, it'll be the same and hopefully it'll be Arsenal to celebrate. The annoying thing, and I couldn't get this out of my mind when I was watching those games yesterday, was it was the home side that won, that came out on top. Um, hopefully tonight, it's a little bit different when Arsenal take on Bayern Munich. So just a huge game. It really is. And you've just woken up, woken up this morning, kind of feeling that. You can sense it is a really huge night for Arsenal tonight, the chance to do something very, very special. We were talking about it and me and some of the other journalists were talking about it. And I think it's definitely, if Arsenal were to win here, it would definitely be their biggest away win in Europe, certainly since the San Siro in 2008 when Fabregas and Adebayor scored. I think it would probably be bigger than that, to be fair. That was the last 16 game. Um, I think coming to Munich, even though Munich uh, haven't had the best of seasons, obviously Leverkusen run, have run away with Bundesliga. It's not been the greatest of seasons for Bayern Munich by their standards. I still think coming here into their own backyard and winning a second leg of a quarterfinal to put your spot in the semi-final, I think it would be up there with one of the Arsenal's greatest ever European nights. It would be a night basically that 20 years from now, you know, we'd still be talking about, like we still talk about the 5-1 at the San Siro or the 1-0 at the Bernabeu. You know, I think if Arsenal were to win here tonight and get through to the semi-finals, it would be one of those nights that you remember for a long, long time. And that's the challenge that Arsenal had ahead of them tonight. And it really, really is a, a huge game. And Mikel, like I said, came to the press conference yesterday. I thought it was very interesting that he brought the whole squad. If you're looking on YouTube now, you can see the pictures of Arteta out on the pitch at the Alliance Arena last night. He did this before the press conference. Usually the, the, t um, the team will arrive like they did. And then Arteta and a player will sort of break off from the team. The team will go to the hotel. Arteta and a player will come over to the stadium to do the press conferences as per UEFA regulations. He did things differently yesterday. He brought the entire squad to the stadium. They all went out on the pitch in the centre circle, had a big huddle. As you can see the picture there, Arteta gave him a big talking to. And then all the players went off on their own, walked around the stadium. You know, kind of like they do when you see them arrive early for games on, on a match day. Um, I thought that was very, very interesting that he did that. You know, why he did that, why he changed that routine. Who knows? Arteta does like to shake things up a little bit. Um, and he obviously wanted the players to adjust to their surroundings a little bit before for this game. Um, and yeah, I thought that was very, very interesting. It'll be interesting. I, after getting, I, I didn't know he'd done this because we were all in a press conference room waiting. And had we seen that he'd done this, I definitely would have asked him why he decided to do it at the press conference. But because we we're all in the room, we didn't know until afterwards when we saw the pictures that the whole squad had come, which is a bit of a shame. But I'd love to know his thinking behind it. And it'll be interesting later on today. I think certainly if Arsenal win, um, to ask him that question and you know, why he did that, why he decided to do that in the, uh, in the game. He was speaking about what, there was lots of questions that Mikel yesterday, but he was speaking a lot. I, I thought he kept turning a lot of the answers 
around to the kind of opportunity that Arsenal had ahead of, ahead of them. Obviously, they're coming in on the back of a disappointing result against Villa at the weekend. There's a bit of a negative atmosphere around the place for the first time in a long time because they've been so good in 2024. Results have been so, so good in 2024 that for the first time in a while, there is a bit of negativity around about obviously, a real painful defeat, a costly defeat when it comes to the Premier League title race. A few players coming in for criticism that maybe we haven't seen a lot so far this season because things have been going so well. And um, But Mikel was, it just felt very apparent, I thought, in his answers. He was very keen to just make it clear, look, we have got something really special potentially right there and we've got to concentrate on that and we're going to try and take that opportunity. And he was asked, you know, what he wants to see from his players in this kind of environment, in this kind of atmosphere on the biggest of stages. And he says, a performance that puts us in the Champions League semi-final. All of the preparation has been to achieve that and to earn that. We've been ready for 10 months and everything we did last season to start the journey in the Champions League after so many years. And tomorrow we have an unbelievable opportunity to make it happen. And it is an unbelievable opportunity to make it happen. You know, at the start of the season, it was, you know, it's an unknown. Arsenal was stepping into the unknown a little bit in the Champions League this year. Yes, they were, they used to be um, regulars in the competition under Arsenal Wenger, of course, but that was a long time ago. It's been, what, seven years before Arsenal had been, in, um, since Arsenal had been in the Champions League when they started this. So we, we didn't really know what to expect. Would they get through the group stages? How far could they get? Um, you know, should they go out tonight? I don't think it's been a disaster this first season back in the Champions League. If you get to the quarterfinals and then go out in the second leg away at Bayern in the quarterfinals, a team that consistently reach the semifinals or the finals or even win this competition. You know, I don't think you look at that as a disaster as your first year back. I think that's it's decent. Arsenal have got further than they had done in a long time in getting through to the quarterfinal stages. But to get through to the semifinals, to get a semifinal against potentially Bayern Munich or, or Real Madrid, you know, I think whatever happens at that point, that would be a good first season back, a really good first season back. It would be something very, very special for Arsenal. Um, and it, they do have an unbelievable opportunity. It's going to be difficult. No doubt about it, it's going to be difficult. As I said, Bayern Munich away from home at this stage in the competition, no matter what they've been doing domestically, is a really tough ask. But I back this Arsenal team to do it. I, I think they can do it. You know, Bayern are favourites. And I think they're justifiably favourites because of what happened in the first leg. You know, Arsenal missed a big opportunity in the first leg, no doubt about it. So Bayern go into tonight's favourites. I'd say it's sort of 60-40. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Arsenal win. I think they absolutely can win. But, you know, Bayern are favourites for a reason. And But Arsenal have a great chance. They really, really do have a great chance. And I just really hope they believe that and they go out and show that later on tonight. And what sort of performance we'll see from Arsenal tomorrow is, you know, how are you going to approach things? Is it going to be maybe a sort of similar approach to what we saw at the Etihad, where maybe you sit more in a bit of a sort of mid-block, low block, and then look to counter-attack? Are you going to try and, you know, really get a buy in early doors? And he said, look, it depended on their approach as well. For sure, I want my team to be ourselves, regardless of the stadium. Sometimes you want to do sometimes you want to do certain things and the opponent doesn't allow you to do it. And we're going to be very clear. We're going to play the game how we want to play the game and what is going to give us the best chance to win it. Tactically, it is going to be interesting how Mikel sets this team up. The last thing you want to do is go too gung-ho, leave yourselves open and suddenly find yourselves 2-0 down at Bayern after 20 minutes and then you've absolutely got a mountain to climb you need to stay in the game you need to almost turn this crowd a little bit restless and speaking to people here um the thought is about Bayern is obviously they're a very good team with fantastic individual players but if things start to go against them this season their heads go down pretty quickly and so the last thing you want to do is give Bayern a foothold in this game you know stay in it keep it tight potentially get yourselves in the game make the fans here go a little bit restless start to get on top and then you could absolutely take advantage of this Bayern team, I think. So it can be really interesting to see how Mikel approaches it. He was asked about Alexander Zinchenko. And it's, it's just, I, I spoke about Zinchenko yesterday. And this, I think this is a really interesting kind of backstory to what's going on at Arsenal. Just sort of rumbling on in the background at the moment. You know, Arsenal have been so unified under Arteta for the last couple of years. And suddenly you've got this player who is becoming quite a divisive figure amongst amongst the fans and you know polarizing a figure amongst the fans you know i i think he's been unfairly targeted i have to admit i don't think he's done loads wrong zinchenko i think he's a very very good footballer i think there's clearly deficiencies in his game when you ask him to play at left back but i still think there's lots of positives and i think the way he's been singled out after aston villa game and i didn't see it all but i've watched the re the highlights obviously i was away but you look at like the second goal, for example, I've seen people say, oh, both goals are Zinchenko's fault. I just don't see that. I don't see how you can possibly look at that second goal. It's Jorginho who gives the ball away. You know, it, it, the whole team had pressed up high 
in that position. Georgina gives the ball away and suddenly Villa break and Watkins scores. Um, I just feel that a lot of people are jumping on the back of Zinchenko no matter what, which I think is a little bit harsh, but obviously it's each to your own. And Mikel was asked about that kind of what's going on at the moment and if he had a message for the fans about Zinchenko. And he says, look, we love Alex. He's given us so much. He's given us a lot and he's up there with different... Um, and he's up there with different qualities. He has unbelievable courage to play football given the circumstances and as well the demands. Stay with our players and support them because for sure they're going to perform better. Uh, that was a little bit of a message to the fans there on Sinchenko. And it's a, it's a big decision for Mikel to make today in terms of who plays at left back, whether it be Sinchenko, whether it be Kivio, whether it be Tomiyasu. I'll talk about that a little bit in, in a minute in terms of what I would like to see and what I'm expecting to see happen in terms of the left back role. But that's certainly one of the key areas. I think when you look at the team tonight, you've got Zinchenko. What do you do with Zinchenko? You've got the left hand side. You know, do you play Martin? Do you play Jesus? You know, do you play Trossard? We spoke to Trossard yesterday. I asked him actually, you know, how he feels about the kind of tag that he's more of an impact player and the fact he scored more goals coming off the bench as a substitute than anyone else in the top five divisions across Europe this season. I said, you know, how does that make you feel as a footballer that you kind of see more as an impact player or better as an impact player than a starter? And he said, look, I've done it. I've done it from the start as well. It's great to be able to do it off the bench, but I've done it from the start and um, as well. And he was very keen to point that out to me. So, you know, do you bring Trossard in, to, in for the, this one tonight? Those are the big sort of decisions, I think. And then what do you do at central striker as well? Of course, Gabriel Jesus played against Aston Villa as a striker and Kai Havertz dropped into midfield, uh, which I don't want to see happen tonight. I don't think it will happen tonight. But those are the big decisions facing Mikel. And these are kind of the predicted 11s that I'm expecting tonight. I'll go over to Bayern one in a minute. I've been speaking to some you know, people around here in Germany tonight, and this is the 11 that they're expecting might well play. Obviously, it's just a predicted 11. We don't know what Thomas Tuchel will do. We'll have to wait and see. But that's the 11 they're thinking about. In terms of Arsenal... I do think that he's going to play Tommy Asu. I've said that a lot of times recently, and he hasn't played him. It wouldn't surprise me if he sticks with Zinchenko and plays Zinchenko. But I think tonight he'll go with Tommy Asu. So my predict predicted 11, this is actually the 11 I would like to see as well. I do think it's the one in Mikel go for, and I think it's the one I would like I would like to see as well. So I've gone with Raya, then White, Saliba, Gabriel, and Tommy Asu in defence. Jorginho, Rice, and Odegaard as three. And then Saka, Havertz, back up top, and Jesus on the left that's what i think Mikel will go for obviously well, he could easily play martinelli i just think martinelli's been since the injury and coming back from the injury he's not hit being able to hit the ground running and i think he'll want jesus to play this game but i also think he'll want havertz to play as a central striker again in this game and have Jorginho back in midfield so i, I think he'll move jesus out to the left and he'll leave martinelli as a substitute um and have Havertz as a nine. And like I said, Tommy Asu, I think, will be the left back. So that's my predicted 11 for Arsenal. In terms of Bayern Munich, because they've got some injury doubts at the moment, you know, we know that Coman's out. We know that um, Nabry is out. Sane's a doubt, but certainly the expectation here is that Sane will play today. The big thing is what do you do it? What are they going to do at left back? Obviously, Alfonso Davis is suspended, which is a big blow for them. And we've been kind of talking to people, trying to work out exactly what they're going to do. And the the feeling is that they might well go a little bit more defensive down that left-hand side. So potentially play Missouri as a left-back and have Guerrero playing forward on the sort of left-hand side of the attack. Obviously, Guerrero is more of a left-back himself. So that would be a little bit more of a defensive option for Tuchel. But that seems to be the thinking here is that's what it will do. And then you have Misala playing as the 10. You have Sane on the right, Kane in the middle. Uh, up top there now there are other options you know people are sending potentially to play Musiala out on the left hand side of the attack and then you can bring Thomas Muller in to play as the 10 Asana in the right and Kane uh, and then you play Guerrero back at, at left back potentially so th there are different options but that seems to be the 11 that a lot of people are predicting that Bayern Munich will go for tonight so uh, so yeah it'll be interesting if that is how the teams line up we won't have to wait too much longer to find out if that is the case. Some of you guys have been getting in touch ahead of the game in terms of what you would like to see. You've got Nostradamus here saying, uh, must 11 for the game with impact subs of Trossard, Jesus, Party, Smith, Rowe and Nelson. So he would go for Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Tomiyasu, Rice, Jorginho, Saka, Odegaard, Martinelli and Havertz. That's his 11 for tonight. Sir King Josh uh, disagrees. He's gone for a different lineup. He says, my lineup for Bayern would be Raya, White, Saliba, um, Tommy Asu, Rice, Trossard, Odegaard, Jesus, Havertz, 
and Saka. He says, while we didn't have a great game against Bayern, Trossard and Jesus have the creativity needed to unlock the game with Rice and Tommy Asu. We have a defensive security and Havertz can stretch the defence with his runs behind. I don't like... I'm presuming there you've got Havertz playing as a central striker in that lineup, given how you've put it. I don't like Trossard playing in midfield um, alongside Odegaard. I really don't. If a, a Trossard, for me, is absolutely his best position is the, is the false nine. Um, then it's left wing and then it's very much left eight. I don't like him in that left eight position. But uh, but thanks very much for your comment. And Justin Cork, 3838, says, shoehorning Jesus back into the team has had the same effect as last season. You're certainly not the only person, Justin. Uh, to mention that in the comments. Um, I don't think he really shoehorned him back into the side. I think he certainly had one eye on the buying game when he named his starting eleven for Villa. And obviously, Jesus has made a big, big impact coming off the bench against Bayern in the first leg. So I don't think he really shoehorned him back into the side. I just think he thought, you know, this is a good opportunity to play Jesus as a, as a striker. I don't think he'll do it again tonight. Like I said, I think Havertz will go back to the central striker and Jesus will play out the left. I don't think he's shoehorning him into the side playing over on the left. I just think at the moment, given Martinelli is not in the best of form, that it makes more sense to play him over there. I thought this one was interesting from uh, DS8G10 talking about Bayern, how they might set up. Says, Nabry and Komen are definitely out. That said, Musiala at left wing and Sane at right wing might be Bayern's best winger duo. If Sane is out as well, they are short at right wing. Muller can play there, but he's looking quite slow these days. And whether due to age games or tactics, doesn't have the connection with Kane that he did with Lewandowski. Tell could play at left winger and Musiala could shift to right winger, but that's untested. I think if Odegaard is fit, he is fit. He's travelled. He trained yesterday. Uh, Mikel said yesterday in the press conference that a late decision will be taken today on him. But look, I think Odegaard 100% plays this game. So I think if Odegaard is fit and Sane isn't, then it's advantage Arsenal. Equally, though, if it's the opposite case, then it's a massive opportunity for Bayern. I also think Jesus, even after the weekend, remains a bigger threat to Dyer and De Ligt than Havertz with his sharp turns and trickery. Kai, in turn, would be better up against Apicano and Kim, who has struggled more against physical attackers. And when you look at the, the lineup that certainly people in Bayern are expecting today, they're going with Dyer and De Ligt as a centre central defence with Kimmich out on the right-hand side as well, and Goretzka and Lima ahead of them. So um, those are the 11s we're expecting from Bayern. And thank you very much for everyone for getting in touch with what you would like to see happen today. And that's it from me for the morning anyway. I'm going to head out to the uh, city now. Well, after I've got this uploaded and try and meet some Arsenal fans, get soak up some of the atmosphere, then heading over to the stadium a little bit later on to get ready for a huge, huge night. Nerves are already going. They really, really are. What a night lies, lies ahead of us. I'll try and do a video after the game, hopefully describing a famous Arsenal win. I'll certainly do a video tomorrow morning as well, a lot more in-depth discussing all the fallout from the Champions League a little bit later on tonight. But from Munich, that's it from me this morning. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the game later. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.